Hello, this question had been posted earlier on and some of the viewers who had been trying to answer this question have requested the solution for it. I want to take this uh, chance now to explain how you could have approached this problem. Now let us go through this problem together. We are told that the ratio of boys to girls in a school is 3 is to 4. Later, 50 girls left the school and the new ratio of boys to girls who remained was 9 is to 11. How many boys were there in the school? To understand, we are told that this school has a, a certain population of students and in that population of students we've got boys and we have got girls. And the ratio is 3 is to 4. What does this mean? That for every 3 boys, you have got 4 girls. Now, what is happening is that some, after some times, 50 girls um, have left the school. And so now we shall have a new population, less 50 students. Because 50 girls are going to leave the school. This is going now to make the whole uh, ratio of both boys and girls to change to 9 is to 11. In other words, for every 9 boys, you will have 11 girls. Let us begin. If the ratio of boys to girls is 3 is to 4, and I have said, for every 3 boys, you have 4 girls. This group here have got seven students. And so we can now get the fraction for boys. We can get the fraction for girls. So the fraction for each gender will be, if we may start with boys, it is 3 over 7. What does this mean? That if you look at... Uh, this ratio that we have here, this group here, we are told that it has got three boys and seven girls. So in total, this group have got seven students. And therefore, the ratio, or rather the fraction for boys, will be three over seven. And this should be the same case for the girls. The girls will now be four over seven. So far, that is that. That in this school, before the, the girls leave, before the 50 girls leave, we've got 3 over 7 of the population for boys. We've got 4 over 7 of the population of the school for the number of girls. Since we do not know the population of this school, we are going to assume that the whole school had X children because we do not know how many children we are, we are there. And so, if we assume that the total number of children was X, then we can get the, an expression for the number of boys. We can also get an expression for the number of uh, girls. Then, the number of each gender will now be, if we may start with the boys, it will be 3 over 7 of X. That is 3 over 7 of the whole population of the school, which is the same as 3 over 7, X. For the number of girls, we've got 4 over 7 of X, which is the same as 4 over 7, X. Now, this expression for girls here, because this is now the total number of girls that we have in that school, and mark you, these are the number of girls before 50 of them left. So, we are told that later, 50 of the girls decided to leave the school. And this now will change the number of girls who will be left in the school. And this now will be the total number of girls that we had in the school, we subtract 50. So this is now the new number of uh, girls that, we, that will be left in the school. So, since 50 girls have left the school, Again, this is going to affect the population of the school, which we had assumed that it was X. Now, since 50 girls have left, the new population now will be X minus 50. 
So we are going now to work with X minus 50 because 50 of the girls have decided to leave the, the school. So this have made now the new ratio to change and the new ratio now is 9 is to 11. In other words, for every 9 boys, we shall be having 11 girls. Again, as we had done earlier, we can be able now to get the fraction for boys and the fraction for girls. This group here has 20 students. So, the fraction of each gender now will be, for the number of boys, it will be 9 over 20. Remember, we are combining 9 and 11, so we get that fraction for boys. The same case for the girls, we shall have 11 out of 20, uh, uh, the fraction of 11 out of 20 to mark the fraction for girls. Remember now this new fraction here, it is after 50 girls have left the school. Now, the current number of girls will therefore be, the current number of girls will therefore be, we take this fraction of girls of the current population. When I say current population, it is the population that has been left when 50 girls have left the school. So it will be 11 out of 20 of X minus 50. And this has been put into bracket because this will be treated as a single number. And this, uh, this, number, this number of girls here will be the same as what we had previously. The number of girls who we are there, we subtract 50. This one is what we had worked out or that we had obtained previously. And this is now what we have. This expression and this expression must be the same because this one is indicating the number of girls after 50 of them have left. And this was the, the previous number of girls. Then we subtracted 50 of them. So this previous expression and this new expression must be the same. And we shall follow the normal way of removing the bracket so that we get now the new expression. So what we shall have is that 11 out of 20 into bracket x minus 50 to be equals to 4 over 7 x minus 50. This expression here is very useful because it is the one that is going to help us to get the value of x. So with this equation, we can get the value of x, that is the number of pupils or the number of students that we had in the school previously before 50 girls left. So this expression here is like what we, you can find here because we are now going to remove the bracket here by multiplying everything that is in the bracket by 11 over 20. And this is what you'll have. 11 over 20 multiplied by x, you'll have 11 over 20x. And 11 over 20 times uh, 50, it will be 550 over 20. And this is equivalent to what you have here. Here we've got 50, but you'll find here we've got 50 over 1. There is no difference between 50 over 1 and 50. We are only creating this denominator here so that we uh, when simplifying this uh, part here we can be able to get the lcm so we are going to solve each of this part independently let us first of all deal with this light side before we come to this uh, left side before we come to this light side here so on this side we've got a denominator 20 20 20 and 20 so it is easy to get the lcm for this part so, the LCM for this part will just remain 20 and we shall just solve this uh, part here in the normal way whereby now we take 20, you divide by 20 and then you multiply by 11x to get 11x because this and this will give us 1. 20 divided by 20 is just 1 multiplied by 550, you get 550. Remember, we are subtracting. Let us go to the right side whereby now we've got 4x over 7 minus 50 over 1. LCM of this denominator here will remain 7. So 7 divided by 7, you get a 1 multiplied by 4x, you get 4x. And the same case should be done by, where, by this number here, whereby you take 7, you divide by 1, you get 7. You multiply by 50, you get 350. And it has to be subtracted because we, we are subtracting.
So this time, we have this expression and we have the other expression. Remember, this expression and that this expression must be the same. It has to be equal. Remember, our idea here is to get the value of x. So, this expression is equal to the other expression. Remember here we've got a denominator 20 and on the other side we've got a denominator uh, 7. To remove these two denominators here which are different, on this side multiply by 20, multiply by 7. And on the other side, do the same, multiply by 7, multiply by 20. That way, it will help us to eliminate these two denominators here. So, that is our expression. And so, on your left side, multiply by 20, multiply by 7. On the right side, multiply by 7, multiply by 20. And now, to remove these two denominators here, you can now divide 20 by 20 to get 1. And this 20 again here can be divided by 20 again to get 1. When you go to the other side, you can take 7, you divide by 7, you get 1. And 7 divided by 7 again, you get 1. So on your left, you'll have 7 multiplied by this number here, which is which has to be treated as a single number because it is other one denominator. And on the other side again, 4x minus 350 should be treated as, a, as one number, then it has to be multiplied by 20. Now what do I mean? This side is 11x minus 50, let it be other or rather be in the bracket. On the other side, the same case, 4x minus 350 should be encrossed in the bracket. And a 20 must be placed outside there. A 7 must also be placed outside there because it has to multiply everything that is inside the bracket. The same case with that 20. So to remove now um, the bracket, take 7 multiplied by, multiply by 11x, you get 77x. Take 7 multiply by minus 550 you get 3850 you get minus 3850 the same case to the other side you you take 20 multiply by 4x you get 80x 20 multiplied by minus 350 you get minus 7000 now the way it is we cannot put like terms together what do i mean this one can be combined with that 77x can be combined with 80x. So that's what we mean by putting the right terms together. Remember the idea here is to get the value of x. So it is better you take this minus 700 to the other side so that it goes there as plus 700, this rather 7000, and then you subtract 350. This 77x, once it crosses the equal sign, it will go there as a minus 77x. So on your left side, you'll be left with 3,150, and on the right side, you'll be left with only 3x. Now, to get the value of x, divide by 3 on both sides. You divide by 3 on both sides, and this is now what you are going to have. You can simplify this one now. Of course, you can divide here by 3, you get 1, and by uh, divide there by 3, you get um, 1,050, and below there, you'll get one so on the uh, right side that will just be one and that will just be one and on this side this time you are left with only x and therefore the value of x will be 1050 students now note the 1050 student is the population of the school before 50 students left now, if you look at now what we have here, we want now to get the, the, the new population. We only need to remove this 50 here for the girls who left so that we are left with 1,000. But now that is not what we are supposed to do because the question is asking us to get uh, the number of boys that we are in the school. Now, to get the number of boys, we have to remember one thing, that previously we had that fraction of 3 over 7 of x which was the same as 3 over 7x. 
So if we can now substitute this x with 1050 and then we simplify, we should be able to get the population of the boys. So this is what we have, 3 over 7, we multiply by 1050. Now this expression here can be simplified. If you can divide there by 7, you will get 1. And if you can divide 1050 by 7, you will get 150, which if you multiply 3 times 150, you will get 450 boys. These are now the number of boys that are in the school. So if you go now to the choice, you'll find the answer is available there. Thank you very much for tuning into this for my class web channel and I'm sure you get educated more and more if you subscribe. Thank you very much.